Today I want to send my dogs after some really silly advice a lot of influencers at large are giving about skincare. Can it be that I'm feeling lonely? Maybe I'm in bad mood? Or maybe I just want you to know better? Mm. Oh! Hi skincare people, Custodio here, age traveler, always asking the question, what is that skin wanted before marketing got in the way? And today, as mentioned, we're gonna be just shaking a little bit some ideas, which I think are terrible ideas, terrible advice about skincare applications. So maybe some of these ideas, seeing from the other side when we deconstruct them, they will make your experience better and your understanding about skincare better. That's my wish. So what is this idea? That products coming in a bottle, they can be serums, oils, uh, I think that's where things went downhill, when the wave of oils came out. Boosters, so all those products which are dispensed from a bottle with a pipette. What is this story that you apply them like this? Dripping product down your face and then rushing. I mean, is this even logical? I think it's time to ask, is digital world and influencers informing reality or is reality good sense informing influencers and digital because this i honestly tell you i just realized it recently because someone asked me the question i'm 50 years old i worked for 30 years in the industry all my life never ever one second came to me as a choice as a logical possibility to apply a pipette to my face Number one, there is, of course, the contamination of the pipette with residues of other products that you applied before, even arguably, even though there must be a good preservation system. So I will not worry so much about bacteria which might uh, harbor your skin, your microbiome, but still that it's not a good choice to make your pipette have contact with whatever um, tissue, whatever su surface. And to me, it's even mind-blowing how people don't realize that removing your pipette, laying down your bottle, applying some drops, just dispensing some drops to your palm, give you the freedom to put it back clean and safe without rushing that something is dripping down your face. Just check how unpleasant and how not sexy elegant that gesture is. And of course, when we say palm of the hand, that's another page to turn influencers. It's the back of your hand. The back of the hand, it's good for makeup, swats and whatnot. When it comes to skincare, even more expensive, precious skincare, you only use the palm of your hand because you don't have the same follicles, you don't have the same penetration fast. So half of your product is not going to be wasted, which is what happens if you do this movement instead of this movement. So first advice of a friend, pipettes are to drop by drop, drip to the palm of the hand and nothing else. Don't follow that influencer if that's the way he's advising you to apply your products. Second nonsense, warm up everything in between your hands, your fingers, from an eye cream, which is this precious, often 15 milliliters product. What's the sense to do it? Again, goes downhill from trends and you start seeing all this imagery and that imagery becomes kind of an advice. So the same way the pipettes started with the oils, warming up started with the bombs and these more rich textures, those yes, we need to warm up, but most of them are actually cleansers. So also when we talk about the amount we use, we need to be more generous, there is a bit of massage, but when we talk about more direct application. So an eye cream for me is the best example. What's the meaning of an eye cream being lost in between your fingers and barely staying on your skin? 
My friends, a night cream is something you apply directly to the outer corner of your eyes. So you should see a spot of product here. It's better here than here because here you are very close to your teardrop. So there is more of a risk, the excess product to penetrate the eyes. If you always begin orbital, you feel bone and you begin from outside, inside, and all the cream is sinking where it should go. You're not wasting your product in between your fingers. The same thing with any moisturizer. If it's a fluid moisturizer, a normal emulsion, emulsion to cream, there is absolutely no reason to warm it up. So please let's make a parenthesis. You want to see that gesture very elegant. I think we also kind of extrapolate from the beautician's world, from the professional, from the spas. Everything needs to look like lifestyle and it's just a waste and a nonsense. When a beautician exercises certain movements, there is a ritual, there is an experience, there are movements that the beautician is doing which have uh, a bliss inducing, there is a sensation. Uh, those re repeated movements can also induce a certain effect penetration of the product. That's very different from saying that when you apply it to yourself, I always believe go strong with ingredients and quality, go light with massages, techniques and secrets. I'm sorry, I told you, maybe I'm in bad mood. I might be bursting this bubble, which uh, most people are firm believers that uh, the application techniques are so much part of the success story of the product. I think otherwise, I think applications should be economical from the point of view that you don't waste product and they should be as light as possible unless you are a beautician, you are a professional, you know exactly how to move your tissues about. Otherwise, I go strong with ingredients, I go light with applications. And since I'm in bad mood, I'm even beginning to feel a bit hot. So since this is a rant and I'm in bad mood, I think I can also say that I despise applicators, uh, special devices, anything which rolls, beeps, tweezes, vibrates. I detest anything which is interfering with skincare application. My belief is skincare application, it's fingers like feathers, a lot of good ideas in your head while applying your products, staring yourself in the mirror, having good positive thoughts about yourself, that's my experience of skincare. Nothing about rules, tutorials, guidelines. That's not my way. It will never be my way. Do you enjoy it? Leave comments below. Just tell me that I'm grumpy and I'm old and I'm out of touch with the reality, but I'm shaking your conscience and seeing if going light in your movements and having good options is not much more options in terms of ingredients. It's not much more educated way to go. Third nonsense. Since I'm talking about feeling a bit warm now, well, getting warm, getting cold, open pores, closed pores. So the absolute nonsense to go high temperatures, steaming, uh, hot water to initiate cleansing and uh, finishing or activating whatever, shrink of the pores with even ice cubes or really, really cold water. So again, there are evolutions in our conscious. There are also some old fashioned techniques also from the beauty, uh, more professional segment, those steamings, but those steamings are meant to facilitate extraction of uh, cystic and of comedon, sebum. So that's a different story. That's again handled by a professional beautician. There are aseptic measures to make it safe in terms of gloves, in terms of some uh, tools eventually to facilitate the effort. So long story short, there is no evidence that hot and cold will dramatically close or open your pores. There might be a temporary contraction dilatation. Is that a benefit versus what it can bring negative? I don't think it is. I don't think it's intelligent and friendly to skin to stretch temperature up and down, up and down on a regular basis. Just to be even further poisonous, I just saw on Instagram um, a Vogue, I think Vogue UK, 
or Vogue US, no, I'm unsure, but one of the two, uh, with the model Irina Shake, and she's giving, I couldn't find the video here uh, on YouTube, but on Instagram, she's giving advice about her morning routine, and she has this weird device, which is a frozen whatever uh, combination of a toner that can be placed in, inside that device, and you start rubbing that big ice cube on your face. Chamomile cucumber water, put it in the refrigerator the next morning, voila, you just rock your all around your face. It's really cold. That's how you basically wake up in Russia. Nice and icy, so then. I mean, it's quite cute, she says, because she's Russian. She says that's a Russian way to wake up. Uh, at least she's not making the false claim that it opens close. For her, it's more the, the wake up, a bit of drainage. And it's true that cold can make, uh, extreme cold can make uh, blood vessels and drainage, lymphatic, maybe uh, stay away from the surface. So to help with that drainage. But again, if you do this on a daily basis, your vessels, your stability in terms of skin thermoregulation, it's something which is not so friendly. In spa, in the reality of professional beauty, you have the dermoglobes, so these uh, water-filled uh, glass capsules which are keep, kept in, in a fridge. So there is a difference between a fridge and the freezer. So of course, they will cool down the surface of the skin, but from a freezer temperature, not to a from a fridge temperature, not from a freezer temperature. So you can, if you want to play on these lower temperature, instead of the ice cubes, just place some metal spoons, the most common spoons, don't buy anything. Use two spoons in your fridge and those you can apply if you are tendency to puffy eyes in the morning, a cold spoon on the, on the surface might induce some of that drainage in a much more dermal safe way than ice cubes. So in talking about devices, application devices, I'm mentioning those which are included in the packaging. Just a few weeks ago, I was talking about my skincare unicorn, the magic eye mask from my brand Swiss Line. We have selected this applicator, which is an always cold metal applicator, which is at always at a just tiny, tiny colder temperature than the room temperature. And that allows that feeling before or while applying the mask to have a cooling effect. So am I against it? No way, because it's not freezing temperature. But what I'm against is to say that those applicators enhance the efficacy of the product, make the product more efficient. No, they make the experience of applying the product more gratifying. That's a huge quantum leap from one thing to another. One thing is to say it makes your experience more enjoyable, nicer, more relaxing, more creative. Another thing is to claim that there is an efficiency, a penetration, which is enhanced and therefore the product is more efficient. There is nothing more efficient and that's where I stand with all these applicators and gadgets. So I think it's enough for a rant. I think maybe you can rewind and try to extract, but I think we killed many, many birds with one stone. And for me, talking about killing birds, uh, it's something that, you know, I'm really in bad mood because these things just make me kind of lose faith in what you, we as a species, humanity, uh, being impressed with this idea of influence and celebrities and all this is wrong. We should never worship people. We should not even worship brands or products. We should worship ideas, logical ideas and expand our mind, our wisdom. So if this is interesting for you, if you think this resonates with something inside your heart, please, please, consider subscribing the channel. I swear this is not the common style of the videos, but I just saw this thing with this dripping pipette, which just made me really, really get angry. And you know what? Maybe the energy, negative energy is out. I feel so much better now, so much relieved because I think I'm trying to make some sense for myself and sharing this with you human fellows and friends of the H Traveler. So see you next week, for sure in a much better mood. Say no to boring skincare. Boring skincare. It's also devices, ice cubes, pipettes, rollers. Ciao.